Good morning. Good morning, boss. I'm Rachel. And I'm Carl. And you're watching Happy's Lawn Care and Landscaping. We're and we, back to reality. Back to work. Yeah. We have to actually do some work, guys. <laughs> yeah. After our children spent all our money this weekend. At the KOA in Tennessee. <laughs> Yeah, so it was, it was fun, fun though. Then. It was fun. So go check out Happy's Family Farm to see stuff on that. Mm -hmm. I am gonna put videos up there once in a blue moon. Yeah. But I gotta say how much we appreciate all you guys. I did an experiment in a video <laughs> a couple weeks back because we're behind obviously on videos. Uh -huh. And I had told everybody to dislike the video to see if it would take <laughs> off. And pretty much nobody disliked the video but <laughs> even when we were telling you guys to no we really do appreciate you guys so much <laughs> yes some people commented oh tree truck going by some people commented that they could not get themselves to dislike it <laughs> but so the video didn't go viral because of dislikes yeah and only got normal views but we do appreciate <laughs> all you guys no we do appreciate you guys it was funny we yeah. even do appreciate the one dislike that we get all the time i mean they obviously are watching the video so mm. yeah maybe yeah. dislike means something opposite <laughs> maybe it means like and where they're at yeah maybe you never know but we are mowing one two three possibly four it just depends on what we want to do i have stuff back at the house so i'm gonna try to do today like maybe mow our front yard yeah, we have a lot of cleanup to do. We have to plant the all farm. the mums in the ground. Mm -hmm. We have to clean out. We're, Rachel wants to clean where we had all the plants and the black plastics down already. We're going to put them in the holes that are there. I have some one-gallon holes, and then I'll dig other holes. And then we're going to have Jared mulch around all these mums. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know, the mums we got, what are they? Um, They're uh, Belgium. Belgium mums, and they are perennial. Most mums, to be honest with you, are their chrysanthemums, so mm -hmm. they are perennial. Um, it's just that people don't always know how to overwinter them yeah. and there's a lot of like contradictory information i think um but what i have found in my experience over the past couple years saving moms let them go this fall mm -hmm. let them you know whatever with their dried leaves or dried flowers just let them go and then first thing in the spring, you'll start to see that there's going to be new growth coming out of where the roots are. Once you see that new growth, then you can go ahead and cut them back. Um, mums are also ones where you need to like prune back so that they don't flower too early, even though they're day whatever they go by sunlight a lot of them yeah um, but if you were to let the buds just go they would just flower earlier than what you want them to yeah um so they usually prune them what late they, june like or early so june? you'll cut them back first is spring and then usually you'll cut them back again with spring growth so usually like end of april and then um, maybe sometimes May, and then you'll cut them back again right before 4th of July. So like end of June, I guess you should cut them back again so that this way they push out and then... Yeah, and they'll still they put can... on a lot of growth because you've seen we bought plugs bugs, this yeah. big. Mm -hmm. They were this big, and by the time we got to selling them the one gallon ones look like big beautiful mums mm -hmm. so them one gallons will now go into three gallons next year when we pull them out of the ground mm -hmm. um and rachel cuts them back so they'll be bigger she'll order probably more yeah different colors this time and um yeah so it was a fun experiment like we really enjoy plants and it just helped this year to be able to offer our clients more variety of plantings when we were doing the landscapes um, and then, yeah, it's just going to continue to get bigger. So I'm excited about that. So since we're talking truck talk, um, somebody deleted a comment. We couldn't find it again about a couple weeks ago. Obviously we're late on videos and leaves are probably already done. Mm -hmm. Um, wasn't rude or anything. They were just asking a question about, they always thought that leaves, oak leaves, if you mulch them into your lawn, that it's bad for the lawn. Um, I never, we never thought it was. We always think mulching leaves into the lawn. Any leaves except for like pine needles is good. But I went back again and did a bunch of research again because before I want to make sure there was one article that said it's bad, but 
all the other 99 articles were all anytime you mulch stuff back into the lawn it's good organic material for the lawn now don't get me wrong if you're going to a yard after say you did your last cut and then say you don't go back there until all the leaves fall down and you have a thick coating of oak leaves I wouldn't recommend mulching all them into the lawn because then you're putting down a thick, thick, thick um, compost or mulched up leaves all over the lawn. That's why we do it. Right. The way we do it every 10 to 14 days. This yeah, one we haven't thick. been here. You can't leave, you know, it just seems you can't leave just a regular pile of leaves. You can't leave too much of the mulched up leaves. And, and the same thing with like mulching your grass back mm -hmm. in. All that stuff is nutrients. Think about these trees get giant. How many nutrients are in those leaves? And we've been doing this for, we've been fertilizing stuff for, I'm not, five years now because I'm going on five years mm -hmm. and doing all that stuff. And we've always mulched the leaves back into the lawn and stuff. And we've never had thatch. I could take you up to the lawns and show you all the way down to the dirt. Um, we don't just run over at one time, even with our lawns as far as grass. Um, we mow over it two times. The second pass definitely makes the lawn pop a lot more and it gets the stuff broken down a lot faster. Mm, yeah. um, if you're mowing your fescue lawn every two weeks and you're only doing one pass, then I could see how you would get a thicker thatch in the lawn and have problems. But I, even then, I don't think so because even, even our weedy lawns that don't get treated that are all weeds we mow them and mulch it all into the grass and it could be you've seen the one on the hill where it was like two feet tall you go back there this i think we're going there today mm -hmm. and it might you might see some leftover grass from before because it's not treated and they don't really mind but you'll see there's not much thatch there it breaks down really fast i think that's more of a a warm season grass thing well and then even i think dirty said um that even if you're doing that properly with only cutting like one and a half inches off, then you really shouldn't get that either. Yeah, so, so, I mean, and then the only other point that we want to make is that um, if you have a lot of pine, pine needles, pine trees, um, that you get sense, that off. The yeah. Lawn. So that I think would hurt the lawn more than anything else, just because it's going to change the pH. Yes. Um, so it's not saying that you can't mulch that stuff back up into the lawn, but just be aware that if you have tons of pine trees, you get crazy numbers. Like you have to add a whole lot of lime and tip. That's why blueberries grow good in Jersey, all the pine and sandy soil. they mm -hmm. have. Yeah. So. It makes it acidic. So yes. that is the one thing with pine. Um, but we just wanted to you know, give, you give, give you some tips, some tips and give you some truck talk. Yeah. So we're going to get out and mow this one. Um, I'll get Rachel mowing some. I'm just going to be blowing leaves here and getting her to mulch them up. All right. So let's, let's go. go. So as you can see, all the leaves are falling off of this one. Not even two weeks ago, this tree still had half of uh, kind of brownish green leaves. So what I'm going to do is blow all these leaves up. You can see the grass isn't that long. We'll mow it a little lower. But Rachel's make, working her magic. So let me go help her blow these leaves.
Not too bad, boss. Not too bad for November 1st. Now, we're not going to get every leave up, of course, because they're still falling, as you can see. We'll be back here in two more weeks to mulch up all the rest of these leaves, and then we're going to get them a quote on pruning everything around the property again. So, and he'll go with it. So, we'll be pruning all this. Okay, let me go blow up the walkways again. So I think you forgot to mow the front. No, I mowed it. They're just falling faster than... I could mow them well, they'll be gone in two weeks. Yeah. And we'll be well, back. back there's not gonna be any more. We finished number two without showing you guys. But somebody. Okay, guys, I'll, we, I will get you a before and an after. Remember last time we came here, how long and overgrown it was? This is the last mow for this one. I'm gonna go work on the back and we'll get up here when Rachel's done. See okay, we are done this one. Done with the last mow for the year on this one. We'll be back next year. Not too bad. Okay, guys. We did not go out and finish that last lawn. I seeded and aerated this yard on October... I think it was around the 1st or 2nd. The clover took over this spot. But you can see where there's baby grass all throughout here. See it all, little clumps and stuff. Now, I did not spray this for weeds. We will do that next season. And this is the half, you see how it's a little more bushier that I've watered. I've watered from this tree over. And then this half, you see, you can definitely tell the difference. You don't see any baby grass seed like you see over there, see? That's what happens, I watered. What happened is we did it right before Hurricane Ian came through. Um, there was a tropical storm here. We aerated it, seeded it, both sides of these. I expect to get a bunch of rain, but we only ended up getting maybe 0.4 tenths of an inch of rain. So then I proceeded five, probably about three days after I started watering every day. I set the sprinkler up and watered each corner every day from the tree over for about 10 days. Then after that, we got a little bit more rain. It was maybe like a tenth of an inch. It wasn't much. Um, and then I switched. Once the seeds started coming up, I switched to an every other day. I turned on the sprinklers. And then we obviously got a bunch of rain yesterday, a little bit over half inch. So I didn't water. And I won't water this again. Probably won't water it again because we're supposed to get more rain upcoming this week and it's cooler, so you don't have to water as much. I'm gonna mow it. I have mowed this twice since we've seeded it, both sides. I'm gonna mow all this and then we'll get it what it looks like after. I gotta move all these moms. I'm not gonna record me mowing most of this, but guys, we really do appreciate you watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, be happy or at least try. And if you keep watching, I'll show you some afters or doorings. So we're going to take a little walk. This right here is the half that did not get watered, but from rain. And whenever I watered any plants in the ground uh, that were in pots, so not much at all. And then we'll walk to here and then you'll let me know. Do you see a difference? I definitely see a difference when you get over to here. This is the side I watered everything. So, as you can see, there definitely is a difference in watering. Now, the only thing is, I wish I would have aerated and seeded this a little bit earlier and did this test a little bit earlier. But look, this, this was not, this was all weeds before. Look at that thick stand of bluegrass. And then if you come down here, and we'll look at it this way. This is this way, walking back. So there's definitely a difference. Um, I see it 100%. You'd come into here and where all this brown, warm season grass and stuff is, you see, I mean, I bet you could even find cores still in here, see? There's still cores in this side, not the other side, but I'm really, really happy. So we're going to do the same thing next year going in. We're gonna water this more on a schedule, probably every two days, and then let mother nature add to it. 
And then this side, we're going to water every once a week and whatever Mother Nature does. And then just see how it looks after that. So I'm going to go down and start mowing everything up. Hopefully you guys have a good night. I have to move all this stuff. We're going to start cleaning out the garden, but that'll be on the farm channel. And all these mums we have to plant into the ground to keep them and save them for next year. So until tomorrow, guys. And we'll keep progress on this um, grass going forward because if we don't get rain, I am going to continue watering it. We have warm temperatures. This lawn probably should stay green all the way until easily if we keep at the way we're going all the way to mid-December. So we'll see. But let's go.